What's up guys, Skyder from Chernobyl Studios. Now in this video, I'd like to piggyback off a video that you may have just seen recently, which is about the C4 multiband trick. I want to talk about one particular EQ move that will save your life when you're using amp simulators, because this is going to clean up the amp simulator tone that you have in connection with the multiband that you're doing. So it's a very simple move, and this is a move I always do basically when I'm using amp simulators. The question is only ever how much of it I'm, am I going to do. So here we are, we have the multiband compressor that I set up previously. Let's disable that for now. And this is what we're working with as far as the guitar riff is concerned. Okay, so first rule of thumb is you always want to do the filters. And I pretty much filter from 100 and down. I don't really spend a lot of time or caring too much about, oh, what's the lowest possible note my guitar can play, and then I'll, I'll filter out from there. No, I have a bass guitar. I want my bass to do those frequencies. So I will pretty typically always cut at about 100. Now with amp simulators, it's very important that you get rid of the harsh digital noise up top. If you're using real cabs and real analog gear, this is going to be a new concept for you because typically you're probably only going to cut around 10, 9K at the most, right? Amp simulators, you got to get a bit more aggressive. So at this point, here we are. So it's already uh, pretty cleaned up, pretty tight. Now, the EQ cut that I'm talking about is a low mid cut. The reason why this cut is going to do so much for your guitar tone is precisely how uh, the technology works. IRs are a snapshot in time. They are a perfect snapshot in time, and every time you play through that cab, it is basically giving you perfect feedback. You know, there's no random cycling of frequencies because there's no acoustic movement. And there's no speaker going back and forth. There's just a perfect snapshot in time. So what that means is that you're going to generate problems and frequencies that you may not realize are a problem if you've been working in the analog sphere for a long time. So here's the cut. All you need to do is you need to make a cut around 400. Now the bandwidth or the cue needs to be in a fashion like this where it kind of ends around 2K. Um, I don't, and, and so I will base my bandwidth cut about like that, towards like that. Now I always start at around minus 2 dB, right? And I get, the bandwidth was good right there. I could probably go maybe a little bit lower, something like that. Now what this is going to do is going to clean up the guitar tone massively. So I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to play it. And I'll turn it on, and you're going to hear a huge difference. So if you couldn't hear it in the mix, let's solo it. Do the exact same thing. So what it's doing is it's getting rid of mid honkiness that's masking the guitar tone. And as far as I can understand, this seems to be a problem with the IRs, like I mentioned before, due to the technology. So this is a cut I always do. Now the question is, how much? Should it be a dynamic cut? Like sometimes, I'll make this a dynamic IQ, IQ, EQ cut, like this for example. It really depends on the guitar tone itself, what the tuning is, and what is happening all over the rest of the song. But this cut is a cut I always make when I'm using amp simulators. And this is really going to help your guitar tone open up. It'll get rid of the sort of the haziness over the mid frequencies, and it'll just make the tone more clear. Now, if we add this into together in conjunction with the multiband that we did, we are going to have a pretty clear guitar tone. It's 
see how the guitar tone is a little bit out of control here. The low end frequencies are sort of all over the place. We have that mid range, just like haze over the guitar tone. EQ. Multi band. We have a, a thick, chunky guitar tone, but what this is going to do is going to free up space for the snare to come through and the bass guitar. The main thing I want you to notice here is when we don't have this processing in here, it almost sounds like the bass guitar is not loud enough in the mix. But when I put these two plugins on, you are literally going to hear the balance go like this where the guitar is going to sound like they're too low in the mix all right and this is the key the fundamental key of using basic eq and multi-band compression with your guitars to help achieve mix balance hear that shift Not well defined, you really can't hear anything. Like, yeah, there's a bass in there, there's a guitar and drums, but it's muddy. You can't you can't separate the instruments. So just these little very basic simple moves that you can do completely changes the, the landscape as far as your mix is concerned. Night and day difference, all right? So that is the EQ move that's going to save your guitar tones when you work with amp simulators, all right? So hope you liked the video. If you found it helpful, please leave a like, let me know. And what other guitar mixing tricks uh, would you like me to show you guys? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.